Another report about how much the average person has saved up for retirement. This one by age. What's the big conclusion? I'm going to help you with that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. We see these all the time. The latest is from Vanguard. The average American, the average worker, has how much saved up for retirement and then breaks that down by age and contribution amount. Now, there's some big takeaways in in this in some errant conclusions that they're drawing in this article let's get into this first of all the big number and it's no surprise the average american the average worker has a hundred and forty one thousand saved up for retirement and you're probably going to say yeah yeah i don't know that doesn't feel like that much and yep this is another article another data point that underscores the uh the retirement readiness gap but here's the thing that's average and unfortunately the number is top heavy, meaning the folks that have saved have saved a lot, and then there's a lot of folks that have not saved much at all or have saved very little. So it's sort of like a, a, a dumbbell approach, okay? When you look at the median, it's actually only 35,000. So if you, if you just kind of take one from uh, the high number and take one away from the low, one from high, one from low, so on, where you get in the middle, 35,000. That is, that is very low, that is very low, and I would argue it's gonna be hard to be on pace for retirement if that's where you're at right now. Now, if we break that down by age, how do you stack up? Take a look here between median and average, 25 years old and, and younger, about uh, 6,300 bucks saved up, 65 years old or older, uh, 280,000 saved up. Now, if you're married, that gets you over a half million dollars. Depending on your lifestyle and when you start drawing Social Security and what other income sources you have and what what your spending is, what debt obligations you have, maybe maybe that, that one could work and, and could be comfortable. But um, by and large, many of these numbers suggest on average, folks are, are behind with their retirement savings with where they should be. That's no surprise. And depending on your own unique financial situation, you may be showing up to this, to this video thinking, well, where do I stack up? But then second, well, if I'm behind, what do I need to do? Number one, guys, it's not just contribution rate. And, and if you read the article here, unfortunately, the individual, uh, a wealth advisor from Vanguard who did this study said, listen, just start saving what you can afford. And at some point, it'd be great to be saving 12 to 15%. I completely disagree. I, I, I do. It, you've got to be, I would strongly encourage you to be saving as much as you can as early as possible. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, starting to save as much as you can early means that you've got more time for those dollars to grow and compound for your future. The money that you save earliest in your life is gonna be the dollars that work the hardest for you. I'm not gonna show you here, but I've done lots of, uh, of presentations about, well, if someone starts saving between 25 and 35 and then they stop, they stop contributing and then compare that to someone that saves from 35 to 65 and again you know giving certain amounts the person that saved from 25 to 35 will have more by the time they retire because they started saving early than the person that waited and so to me starting to save as much as you can as early as you can is one of the biggest takeaways because those are the dollars that you that that are working the hardest for you but the second reason that i would tell you start saving as much as you can as early as you can is that builds a habit that builds a habit of saving where you're going to make that a high financial priority in your monthly budget and then build other pieces around it. Life comes at you fast. When you're young, you're trying to get out of the house and you're getting used to you know, managing your own bills, but then pretty soon you're gonna buy a house, pretty soon you're gonna buy a car, you're gonna get married, you're gonna have kids, and hopefully your income is growing in, in lockstep with all those rising expenses, but if not, I, to me, of all the big transitions and stages in your financial life, that one where you're 
getting married and having kids, that's the hardest financial transition in my opinion. And usually in order to make everything fit, people are saying, well, that, I gotta cut that, that's gotta go, that's gotta go. You're not gonna cut out the, the, you know, the, the house because you've got a growing family. You're not gonna cut out the trips because those are memories and those are extremely important. You're not gonna cut out going out to eat and grocery store and lifestyle stuff. So typically what's easiest to cut is the savings. And I hear all the time where people are getting started in their life and oh gosh, well now, you know, one of us is, is on maternity, staying home with the, with, with, with the new baby and something's gotta give, so we're cutting this. Or I didn't realize childcare was gonna be that expensive. That doesn't fit in the budget. Something's gotta be cut. I was saving 15% to the 401k. I gotta bring it down to 5%, something like that. So those, getting started, saving as much as you can, as early as you can, is so critical. Now take a look at this chart showing how much people on average are saving into their 401k at different age groups. 8% for age 25 and younger, that's actually higher than what I, what I expected. I want it to be higher. I mean, this graph, this chart here shows alone that savings contribution rate is not enough. It's not enough because those folks 55 to 64, they're saving 12.7%, plus hopefully they're getting a match on that. That actually lines up with what the, inter the individual they interviewed with, that lines up with, with what they're suggesting. However, when you still look at the data, they still don't have enough saved up. Guys, it's more than just contribution rate. It's contribution rate as early as possible, and then riding that contribution rate through the ups and downs. To me, to me, I would want you to start saving 15% from your very first paycheck. Any match would be gravy on top of that. I know lots of these folks and some of these articles say, well, you contribute 10 to 12% and then with a match, hopefully that gets you up to 15%. No way, you do 15. You do 15 and the match is gravy, okay? And that should be from your very, very first paycheck. If you haven't started from your very first very first paycheck, or you started early and then life came at you fast, like I mentioned, and I'm not shaming you, I, I've, I've lived through it, and I've seen people live through it, it's, it's tough. Um, and you slow down your contributions and you pick it back up, or you lost your job for a while and you were just getting back and then finally you had stable income and then you restarted again. If you had those gaps, in that retirement savings, you might need to do more than 15%, okay? Work with your certified financial planner, see how you can do it. To me, save as much as you can, and then every year increase it 1%. Why? Because you'll barely feel it. You'll barely feel it. The second big takeaway that I would that I would draw from this, and they don't speak to it, but one of the other big factors in how much you have saved up for retirement is how much risk you're taking with your investments. Now, it's an awful time to talk about that. You're gonna turn the channel. No, don't don't do that. But so often we talk, we're looking to, you know, we're talking to folks and we're looking at their 401k and they're saying, yeah, it just hasn't done that well for me, whatever. And we look at the investments that they've chosen and they're just out of alignment. They're just, they're, they, they, they haven't chosen appropriate investment vehicles for their 401k. And unfortunately, so often your 401k is set it and forget it. I enrolled a long time ago and I never made any changes. Or I had a moment where I got in and I tinkered with things and then I forgot about it. Um, something like that. And that can happen right now where you're looking at your 401k and you see the balance just keeps going down. And so, gosh, I'm gonna make a change. And you go in and you make a change and then you don't change it for five or six years. And you realize that, oh gosh, maybe that made me feel better at the time, but now that means I've actually been low risk for the past five or six years and, and haven't been able to buy investments, buy stocks at low prices, or have some, uh, some appreciation whenever this market rebounds. So making sure that you're taking the right level of risk for your situation. Now, what is that? It's based on your age, because when you're young, you've got a lot of time for, uh, to ride through those ups and downs. But then also, you've got to make sure that uh, you're taking the right level of risk for your own temperament. If you're tempted to not be able to sleep at night and, and you wake up, log in, and make some quick changes, you're probably taking too much risk. And you might even need to be saving more than that 15%. Make sure your, your, your investments are structured for the right risk tolerance and that you don't tinker with them that often. That is another big factor in determining how much your, your balance is inside your 401k.
And then the final factor that I would touch on here that, that, that I would encourage you to evaluate with your certified financial planner as you're looking to see, well, where do I stand compared to the average person's 401k balance and how can I get as much as possible is that decision to contribute pre-tax or Roth. And here's why that's important. When you're contributing, I was working with someone early in my career and in their mind, their financial plan was once I get to a million bucks, I'll be able to retire. Now there's all sorts of issues and, and challenges with that. I've done some videos on it before, but there's five factors, five factors that determine your ability to retire with confidence. And yes, how much do you have saved is one of them. Your overall investment balance is one of them, but it's not the only one. It turns out he hit, uh, he hit a million at age 54. And age 54, you've got to buy health insurance, you don't have any social security income, and as you're drawing dollars out of your 401k or IRA, there's some additional taxes that you could face. Now, I revealed all that to him and he said, it, it doesn't matter, I'm still, I'm still gonna retire. Here's the problem, he didn't have a million bucks saved up. A large chunk of that was Uncle Sam's. Think about it, if you've been contributing pre-tax all along into your 401k, you get a million dollars, and then you start pulling 100,000 out of that each and every year, just ballpark, you've probably gotta give 15,000 or 20,000 to Uncle Sam, okay? So on that million bucks, 150 to maybe 200,000 is Uncle Sam's, either you know the, the big uncle or the small uncle, you know the federal government or the state and local, okay? It's not, it's not your million bucks. If you're saving up in the Roth side of the 401k, all of that money, yes, you didn't get a tax benefit, a tax deduction on the way in, but all that money when you take it out is yours. So therefore, a million dollars in your 401k, that's all Roth, that's a million bucks. That is your money. You don't have to slice off any of that and give it to Uncle Sam. So therefore, when you're looking at your overall retirement balance or your 401k balance, you've got to look and say, well, is all that mine? Or am I going to have to share some of that with my silent partner, the IRS, when I start getting my hands on it? That's another huge factor as you're looking and saying, well, what's my 401k balance? How does it stack up? The truth is how your 401k, whatever your balance is, how it compares to the average person does not matter because your financial situation is unique. You, it's, even though you, 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 know, you work at the same job as your coworkers, you live in the same neighborhood as your neighbors, even though you had the same upbringing as your siblings, your financial life is different. It is unique. It, it just is. The folks that just look as similar as possible, when you actually look at their, uh, at their financial situation, decisions that were made back in their 20s, how you know, their parents were raised, all these sorts of things can drastically make their finances different, even though from an exterior standpoint, the cars they drive, the neighborhood they live in, blah, 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 the clothes they wear, it all looks pretty similar. Internally, it can be very different. So how do you stack up against your goals? What's your overall, what are your overall financial goals and how do your savings fit within that? That's the job of your certified financial planner, working with that CFP, going through those five factors that all work together, they're all interrelated to see if you're on track for retirement and then have that determine whether you should be saving more, saving less, whether you're on track or not, what adjustments you need to make. Work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team, find us online, corehorn.com. That's Corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.